MSK Physiotherapist is set up uh, primarily to assess and manage and hopefully intervene for the benefit of patients who suffer from uh, conditions affecting their bones, joints and nervous system. Everything from a knee injury or a broken bone um, right up to the point where you're managing a long term condition like a, a low back pain or something along the lines of fibromyalgia. So we have people that have a broken finger for example and then you have everyone right up to um, wheelchair bound and really struggling with day to day life and appreciating that, that they cannot work, they cannot function. The service has recently transformed from a number of uh, different physiotherapy MSK services in Fife into a single Fife-wide service. It now provides uh, physiotherapists on site in 17 locations across Fife. We have around 40 plus full-time equivalents to see these patients and we're seeing around 20,000 plus referrals a year. So we see people, people at times for short periods, however, we really pride ourselves on having meaningful interventions with each one. The ethos uh, of MSK physiotherapy is very one, very much one of putting the patient at the centre. So being uh, involved in the community setting within the patient's own environment, we're able to provide them with more um, potentially direct uh, support. It's about person-centred care, it's about, uh, it's about uh, safety and it's about, uh, about providing quality services. So they're the, they're the, pre, you know, sort of the main sort of remits of the or the remits of the job. Uh, and I suppose aligned with that, it's also about you know having a, an efficient sort of service. You know, we're in we're in challenging in times in terms of you know I say the aging demographics of the service. One of the main selling points from a, an MSK physiotherapy point of view in terms of profile is that we have a, a consultant physiotherapist on our team who has great inreach into what's happened nationally. Recently, MSK services have been driven quite a great deal by uh, national policy and, and in no small amount, uh, the four week target has been one of those. Um, what the consultant enables us to do is bring national policy to the local setting and embed it in a wee bit more detail because they have that awareness of that. And I think that something that's very dear to my heart is uh, obviously um, you know, staff development. You know, without having a, a, you know, a good and uh, you know, developed staff then they can't do these other, these other, um, these other tasks. So that's pre you know, predominantly the role that I, I fulfil here in, in Fife. We truly believe that investing in each individual member of staff will allow them not only to become the best physiotherapist they, they, are, they can be, but also to develop all of their four pillars of practice. It's very much at the core of what we, what we do. We try and ring fence as much as we can. Uh, you know, staff development, we try and give opportunities working with NHS Education Scotland. We've got various sort of fellowships ongoing at, at, at present. Uh, we've got a research and uh, audit presence that we try to work with staff, we've got an ongoing uh, training plan. We have regular uh, in-service programmes uh, throughout the year. Usually they are based around evidence-based practice. We have one-to-one -one peer review sessions, peer group uh, work as well. We actively encourage our staff to go on uh, outside courses and free internal courses. The support that I've found to be immense has been through the musculoskeletal team and that again was one of the things that attracted me to, to that service. There's no point in, in setting staff up with challenges um, only to be critiqued um, and that's certainly not the case. Um, there, there's the, the, the type of um, encouragement that goes with incremental progress um, certainly in my career so far has been has, has unleashed new levels of confidence and, and competence as well. Just recently we started uh, developing advanced practice clinics so that the, the, the theory behind that is to try and get patients to the right individual as quickly as possible. Um, uh, some of the patient group that we see now is quite uh, uh, diverse and has, uh, has a lot of uh, other comorbidities going on so some of our staff uh, they're trained to high level, but they, they'll then come at a point where they maybe struggle to manage some of these more complex patients. I think we've got to think of advanced practice as a level of practice, which is basically integrating, you know, the, kind of the four pillars of practice. So that's sort of clinical, that's uh, leadership, research uh, and audit, and uh, facilitated uh, education. I think there's now a recognition that this is, you know, moving forwards. It's not just a substitution for, for doctors. They're actually adding to the value of, of, the, of the pathway. Our staff have had to upskill. Uh, and try and um, 
uh, and incorporate uh, new skills, they've learnt new skills such as injection therapy and x-ray uh, imaging um, to, to allow these clinics to happen. So there's, there's opportunities from our, our fives right up to our sevens. So that's what you really get in Fife and that's a really unique selling point I think for, for potential recruit, recruitment and for potential posts is that people can come into Fife and not only see patients and learn clinically, we will invest in their future leadership skills, innovation skills and anything else they're particularly interested in. By doing that and by also engaging with the service users and being open to engagement with the service users, we continually try to transform, innovate and develop the service where the need arises rather than perhaps assumptions that the service we provide is the, is the gold standard. And we do provide, uh, we, we think, uh, as close to a gold standard as we possibly can um, within the the limitations of the resources and pressures and demand that we're obviously faced with. But we're under no illusions that unless we develop, invest in the social capital that we have in our staff, promote development within our staff and engage with our service users to see where that development is best aimed, uh, we cannot uh, develop and improve as a service.